Thanks, Mary. Thanks for the introduction, Mary. I'll go now. Okay, two poems. Um, the first was uh, written in the quiet of an evening, sitting on the actual poetry path and noticing how quickly nature was taken over again, what we'd done. It's uh, very creatively titled, this poem, so it's called The Path. And mouths will close, and mouths will be as silent as a crane fly, and humankind will pass as an insect passes, and humankind will become whatever we will become. And the universe will expand, or the universe will contract, or the universe will do what the universe will do, and poetry will pass. And the path will fade, will fade under a green thicket, a green thicket of bracken, grasses, sages, a green thicket drinking the sun's full flare. And trees will lay down, will lay down across the path, and carved stones will brittle in the cold, and carved stones will crack and crumble, and moss will blanket the rickle of their ruin, and lichen will spread, and lichen will smother forgotten words. And the universe will expand, or the universe will contract, or the universe will do what the universe will do, and poetry will pass. But for now, carved stones speak. Carved stones speak and reach into the hearts of some who read, some who read and have mouths that open. The second one's a wee bit cheerier. <laughs> um, the, this, the next poem's really just a, a tip of the hat to everybody who's been involved in this project. It's been so many people in so many different ways. And um, again, it's very creatively titled. This poem's called For the Pathmakers. This is for all who got stuck in and made a difference. And for the ones who got stuck in to a good chat, about how they might make a difference. And for the ones with initiative, and the other ones with skill. And that rare and wonderful creature who was in possession of both. <clears throat> and for the ones who learned that it is quite within the realms of possibility to work and talk simultaneously. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> and for the ones with a question for a face, pondering their place as spikes of rain lash them as they pinch bar through frozen crusts of gravel whacking mattocks into stone while heaving rags of spent breath into minus air. This is for all who moved to stone or cut the turf or borrowed the gravel or sawed through trunks or pushed a pen or bent an ear or lent an ear or sharpened a chisel or swung a pick, a hammer, an axe, a spade to make this path of poetic possibility.